Memories are made of such sounds. <laughs> Jacinta Curran is with me. Your first LP was Simon and Garfunkel. That's right. Long, <laughs> long time ago. Ah, it's not that long ago. Oh, it is. <laughs> Jacinta is from uh, Chernobyl Aid North. Based in Uri, once was Chernobyl Aid in Uri. That's right. But now you're encompassing the whole northern hemisphere here. That, that's right. That's what you try to do. Indeed, indeed. Chernobyl. It, uh, a word that strikes fear into the hearts of those who have observed over the years the awfulness of nuclear fallout and the like and the explosion at the Chernobyl reactor mm -hmm. in Russia uh, had a devastating effect on the area and your organization was established in your to reach out to that. I think you're not long back from how long are you in, 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 in the, uh, uh, practicing now uh, out there and doing things out there? Well, the original group would have went out in 1997 and started with so, um, renovation works and things so, like yeah, that. Yeah, so, so you have a good, good long yeah. provenance there. What was the motivation? Because Chernobyl was over there, Newry's over here. How did Newry say, ah, we want to go to Chernobyl? Well, the original group started prior to that with taking children over. Do you know the children that came for respite yes, care for, yeah. for two weeks and trying to get their immune system healthy yeah, and things like that? the explosion. Yes, mm. but that would mean, I think, from 92 to 97. But they found it very hard to send those children back to conditions that were awful. Mm. Um, but they also found it hard that other children out there were not getting the benefit that the children got that mm. came over. So they decided then in 97 to go out and do renovation works in, in schools and, and you know, asylums and orphanages. And then in 2001, I was approached to add a medical end to the, mm. to the projects. So mm. I've been going since 2002. So you're, you're, you're a chemist, uh, mm -hmm. an apothecary. <laughs> you're, down, you're down there at the Keys in Uri. That's right. So you, you, have a, you have medical, that area of medical knowledge, but rather different thing to be binding up the wounds of the broken. Yes, well, originally when we went out, that would have been like our, our, my total work would have been looking after like wounds and, um, you know, health needs and uh, physical needs. Now we, we, we split it a lot into social needs. There's an awful lot of social needs like, you know, and, you know, things like just basically buying pampers for children. Yes, things yes. like, you know, um, but, uh, getting catheters and urine bags and things, getting, getting to people what they actually need. Mm. So it's not so much about dressings and wounds now it's more about what what they need um, because there's no yeah. like social care so there's mm. nobody looking after people who are paralyzed in the house so we would like try to find beds for people so that person lies there all lies day long there, yeah yeah looking so, at four walls yeah um so mm. like when we would have met some of the the paralyzed young boys who with three in our books and you know we had met them eight years ago they'd be lying in ordinary beds no you know nothing to help prevent their bed sores. So now what we're trying to do is prevent wounds, prevent things and, you know, get them, prevent infections. Whereas before, mm. when we were out initially, we were treating those type of things. So it mm. has moved on. We're, okay. we're using prevention. Rather this than little family, can we put that image up on screen, please, Aaron, that we can look at that and talk about that? Have we got it on screen yet? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, now, tell us, you're here with two young boys. What's the situation here? Well, we met the little boy, our chum, and we did a project, uh, a daycare centre. Um, uh, we started it four years ago and finished it two years ago. It was the first daycare centre in the area where um, children such as our chum could go during the day um, and be looked after. Other than that, there's no social care, so children like that would have ended up in orphanages. Severely autistic. Um, so now when we go to the daycare centre, we, we, we look after the, the people who, the children who attend the daycare centre, we go to their family, so we outreach to them. Mm. So our chum and Vladik, our two brothers, they, they live with their great granny in very extreme poverty. Um, and what sort of house do they oh, live in? Oh, you wouldn't believe it. You really wouldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. Can uh, you come back to us again, Aaron, please? Yeah. It was just... Uh, when we saw the house that he lived in, which was only last year, we started um, looking into his background. It, you just wouldn't believe that people would live like that nowadays. Mm. Um, it would be like, you know, 80 to 100 years ago in Ireland. Um, and yet there is other houses that are, you know, beside them, which are relatively OK. It's, mm. you know, it's just their condition. Their mother is an alcoholic, which is there's high alcoholism rate in, in Belarus. Um, the, the granny doesn't take in to do them, so it's the great granny who's 78 looks after these two boys. Mm. So they, we, we, we supply Archam. Archam, unfortunately, is really autistic, and you know, if he, if he didn't have uh, pampered, he's four. Um, you know, he would he would eat his own excrement. It, it's it's mm. just it's mm. just horrific to watch. So 
that, that's what we did. We we're, were sponsoring him with his Pampers. Um, Vladik, the older boy, is gorgeous, bright young boy, mm. eight years of age, lovely. Um, we you know we we just like we take him into Minsk and we bought him shoes, winter coats mm -hmm. and shoes in September. This time we were buying them as their summer clothes. And then we found a place where we could have Vladik for three weeks, where he could mm -hmm. have three weeks in a lovely environment during the summer um, to escape the poverty. So we, we paid for that. And that was only 100 euros. I mean, what is 100 euros nowadays? Mm -hmm. Nothing. But that boy for three weeks will have, you know, hopefully the time of his life. 100 euros. 100 euros, yeah. Goodness mm -hmm. gracious. For, for three but weeks. But I mean, you're, you're beyond putting patches on things. You're not mm -hmm. just putting band-aid on. No. You're taking it further. It's more than three weeks. Oh, yeah. Um, well, at the minute, our project is we're building a house for um, the first time this has happened as well, where we can try and get people out of the asylums into a halfway house. Mm -hmm. We tried this back in 2007, went to the government in Minsk, nothing would happen. Last year, um, we, got a f we were in the country and we got a phone call to say that permission was now granted um, to, for this asylum and so we started work in September. It's like a community house mm -hmm. where people leaving the asylum. Mm -hmm. How many folk can you take in the well, halfway well, place? Well this one has four bedrooms, two double bedrooms and two singles mm -hmm. so that will, you know, that's all this one can take but there is plans for four houses. We started off one house and we see how we get on with that mm -hmm. before we commit to anything else. You see it's important just to emphasize for the folk and I want to do this that this is substantial work. It's not just going out and bringing, as I said, sticking plasters. This is building for the future. You're taking mm -hmm. people away from. Mm -hmm. your, uh, yeah, Chernobyl Aid North is taking people away from the asylum environment mm -hmm. and re reintroducing them or allowing mm -hmm. them to be reintroduced into the community. Now, that community that they're eventually going back into. Will it be a welcoming community? Well, it depends on how well. I mean, there, the, 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 the Belarusian uh, system is, is awful. When, when you end up in an orphanage, either from birth or later on, the state owns you. And when, when you become 18 or 25, those are the two times where you change into asylums, depending on what use you are. Um, if, you're, if you're well able to 18, you, you stay on the, in the orphanages to help with their, feed, their produce and you yes, know, their, yes, their gardening yeah. and their yeah. farming. Um, so at 18 or 25, you move into asylums and you're still state-owned. So you have no rights. You cannot get out. No There's matter, no concept of freedom. No concept of freedom. So you are totally owned by the state. And so in, like there is lots of people. We have lots of asylums that we actually visit that we know people shouldn't be there um, and they're so they're you know they're so well able that they could be integrated into the community really mm -hmm. easily but as I say we, we tried in 2007 nothing happened so we went on to other projects like daycare centre and old people's homes and then suddenly mm -hmm. last year we were out in February and this happened and so it's brilliant because we had one of our members Aidan McAleenan who who had give, was given a bad prognosis and sadly died in August and in February, when we were asked to do this house, we immediately thought, we'll do this for mm. Aidan. And so we're going to call it Aidan's house. Um, mm. He was a fantastic worker. And so he will be hopefully looking down and guiding us. Mm. And um, mm. yes, to get, some, to get a few people out, to start off with a few people, mm. is immense. Mm. It will open the floodgates mm. to other charities doing this. So, mm. you know, even though we were saying one house, two double bedrooms and two single bedrooms, it's much, much mm. more than that. The, the to what extent are you feared by the government? Do they deliberately work against you because you're there taking their reliable slaves, if you mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. and giving them the freedom of a return to a community? Well, that has been the case and still is the case somehow. It makes it very hard. We had an extremely stressful week. I mean, if you think of trying to build a house when you go out a week in the winter and two weeks in the, in the summer, it's really hard to do this. So mm -hmm. you have to have everything kind of, you know, going smoothly. But um, they, they do make it hard. Mm. Getting visas, mm. they make it hard. Mm. Getting materials, they make it hard. Mm. But you have, to, you have to just find a way through. We might have another image there to look at, I rather think we do. What have we got? Now, what's this? This is your, this is your workers you're talking about building. That's my workers, yes. Goodness gracious. Um, now, the guy on the left is Decky. Jacintha's angels. <laughs> they are. Um, Decky is the one on the left. He um, is Aidan's cousin. Yes. Collie Lochran is Aidan's best friend. And the, 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 the next guy is the main guy in our group. He's been there since 1997, um, Collie McGuigan. Ah, oh, yes. And he's there all the time. Um, and then the next one is Anthony Kearney, um, and he's a bricklayer. So all he came out. All people. All people. 
there in Belarus. In Belarus, and they got from um, we had we had just gone to um, the you know the substructure level in September, and they did that in. And a this week. is Aidan's house. This is Aidan's house. Yeah, it's brilliant. It was amazing to get up to that level, and you know all the joists and work inside and all. It was just in a, in a week. Those boys were brilliant. Yeah, another image there, please, Aaron, if you would. Now, who uh, have we got here? Oh, this is this is a really lovely guy, Pasha. We met him ten years ago. He's one of the guys that you met him when he was but a boy, really. A well, child. he's, he's eight, uh, We met him at eighteen. He's twenty-eight now. Oh, he is doesn't he? look it. He doesn't no. look it, but he is twenty-eight. Um, he had dived into the river and broke his neck. Oh, um, really bad state um, at the time we met him. Um, we met him. In, uh, he's he was a big six footer, lying in a bed that was too short for him. His legs were all covered in ulcers. We um, immediately um, sourced a bed. Mr. Gerard O'Hara, who was phenomenal support at, at that time. Yes, indeed. Yeah, he, he sponsored two beds, one for this guy and one for another guy. Goodness gracious. And um, he, we, we have rehabilitated him over the years, um, had few operations, which means yeah. he can use his upper body. And That's Jared at the Keys. Jared at the yeah. Keys, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, indeed. And He's helped us in Africa as yes, well. Yes, really good. Uh, never looks for um, any no. kind of... Um, Huge man. Yeah. Um, so but this lad, you know, it's important for us to remember mm -hmm. that any of us is Dead. only a couple of weeks lying immobile on a bed mm -hmm. away from bed sores. Mm -hmm. That's right. It happens to us all. Yeah. And they so, go septic, they go bad. Yeah. So the beauty of our wonderful bodies disintegrates very, very quickly. It, it is, and you know, they, and you they, see don't, it here. they didn't have, they don't have an understanding of wound care, mm. or, but mm. we got him sorted out with all of that. Um, then he, he lives in an upstairs, an upstairs flat with his mother and his brother. Has he any movement? He's moving in top half. That's top why, half, yeah. That's why we've got him. Uh, we got him a five laptop. years ago. And we got him a laptop, but it was a basic laptop. Yeah. In the last couple of years, he's been able to set up his own wee uh, business on on, on on online, and he's starting to make money. So in September, when we were out, he, he was saying that he needed to make up a website, but his, his laptop wasn't mm. fun functioning. Mm. So I said, well, if we've money, when we come back, we'll get you mm. a laptop. But he didn't stuff. believe us. And when we went out in April and we yeah, told him we, where we're yeah. getting the laptop for him, we bought it in Belarus because it's better to buy out yes, there yeah. so that they can um, maintain it. And, and you're also helping the local economy, the economy which that's is it, important. Yes. And so that's why we buy all our materials mostly out there now, except for yeah. dressing materials. But everything else is bought out there. And he was delighted. Mm. You, I have never seen a face light up as much as, as well, you, Pasha getting his I mean, laptop. That's amazing. amazing. Yeah. Another image please, uh, Aaron, if you have. The boys, How the work continues. The, work, the boys working away. On Aidan's house. On Aidan's house, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, so good. Another one? Ah, uh, look at the wee man. Is that that's his mum? No, that's, that's Yulia and Masha. It's a wee, bo a wee girl. A wee girl. Um, very severely, um, she suffers from uh, cerebral palsy. Yes. Um, when a child is born, and quite a, there's a, a high uh, rate of uh, disabled children born out there, what for whatever mm. reason, whether it's radiation, whether it's the cur, whether it's uh, you know antenatal, postnatal, whatever, the numbers are very high. But the fathers tend to leave the mother. Uh, with the disabled child and that was another reason mm. why we did the daycare center because mothers are left alone with disabled children um, and this this story is she this mother is a lovely mother very very clean very tidy she tried to do distance learning course to do a degree she's trying to help herself it's not mm. you know they do mm. try sometimes to help themselves but child is very very badly disabled so we, we support that child we, we pay for the rent in September, we, she was getting too big for her, mm. her wheelchair, so we bought um, a wheelchair for her, well, a, a, well, a um, buggy type well, wheelchair. Um, yes. And we went in April and we asked this time, you know, what, 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 what could we do that would make something nice for the child, mm. something happy mm. for the child? Mm. And she said, well, she really likes water. Um, and so we spent 100 euros on a big pad and pull. That the, this summer is, mm. out there is very hot. And a big pad and pull. Um, and... Whilst I didn't see her in it while I was there, because we didn't mm. have the time, I got word from the, um, our translator last week that the pad and pull was up and running and she was loving it. And the freedom for her, you know, because of her poor I saw I saw this in India with my boy of India, Tony, mm -hmm. the little fellow. The water greatest thing, uh, he, he, water, we got him a, a, a large dish, a yes. large, like a washing up, but it was about 
a meter across yes. and about 18 inches or two feet deep, so to speak. And he's in that. He says, watch how uh, I can stay underneath for 30 seconds mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. watch me dance underwater. Yes. And Rowan, when I'm underwater, I see all kinds of things. Yeah, it's amazing. It's fascinating. You know? so it's and it's so simple too. Yeah. It's so simple. Absolutely. And it will help for it with her, you know, with her therapy yeah. as well. So Absolutely. It, yeah, another hundred years well yeah. spent. Come, come back to us again, if you would, then, Aaron. Back we come. So the, this is going to go on and on and on for you. It's not going to disappear. Yeah. It's, yeah. Some, sometimes you get so tired because every time you go out, you meet somebody else who needs help. Um, just at the end of that trip, we were contacted about a family similar to, to our chum and Vladik's mm. family, severe poverty and a lot of conditions um, that needed sorting out. With the week that we had, we hadn't time to, mm. to, to visit that family. So that's in September. As well as all the other ones that you gather mm. up, you just mm. keep gathering. You keep mm. gathering. It's like the Pied Piper when you go out. You just keep mm. gathering more people. Physically, what kind of demand does it make on you the couple of weeks you're there? How long do you go for? Well, we go for a week. Um, we, we usually mm. went for a week around February, March, but mm. because we're building the house on the outside, we had mm. to go in April this time for mm. better weather. Mm. So it's a week you know, around that time and two weeks in September. Mm. So three weeks out in Belarus in total. But it's like, as you know yourself, it's like 52 weeks a, a, a year here a, raising awareness raising and, and raising money. funds and yeah, whatever and, and just I, said to you, I said to you really what you need to do now because you've been there a long time <laughs> these experiences must be captured in a book and mm -hmm. you must bring out your book uh, I spent a long time writing my book on Africa and India but not publishing it and I had everything there until I came across uh, Gully and Media up the road George mm -hmm. Kings North and now my book Caritas et Amor and the Footsteps of Love it's coming out at the end of July mm -hmm. so you should be thinking along those terms because when when your time comes to stop going oh yeah <laughs> you will need to encourage and to other stimulate people. other uh, people and yeah. your book will do that I, I, I think now uh, emotionally what does it do to you going out there oh it is it, it's very stressful it, it it's very um it is very emotional um because you know every time you come you see you think you've seen the worst mm. and then you see worse um so you're constantly in an emotional state but really now when i started i started for a year or two but mm. really i couldn't stop it now because to be back here thinking oh, of yeah. those people there mm. i couldn't do it so mm. Whilst it's, it's, it's emotionally draining in one way, I think it'd be worse mm -hmm. the other way, staying here and thinking mm -hmm. about them. Mm -hmm. So at least when I know I go out um, with all the people's money and help and um, mm -hmm. I, I, we can get things done. And that's what we do. We, 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 don't, mm -hmm. we have no overheads, we have nothing. We just no. take the money out so and we you, spend it. In your area, if you're anywhere in the world, wherever you are in the world, you know, Manhattan, West Coast, San Diego, uh, wherever you are, down in Australia, in, in New Zealand, wherever, on the costas, you know, you can help. How do people send you money? What do they do? Well, really, um, I, I work, Listen in, the, to this now, I work in the medical hall in the Key Shopping Centre in Newry, so anybody can contact me there at any time. So um, a check made out to C-A-N. Yep, that would easy as that. C-A-N, Chernobyl Aid North. Uh, sent a check, crossed and sent to... Uh, Jacinta Curran, mm -hmm. the medical center, the, medical the keys, hall. the medical hall, the keys, Nuri will okay. get you. That's it. And Simple as that. These guys really, really need help to do the wonderful things that they're, they're doing and continue to do. When do you go back out again? We we'll go back in September. We think uh, we think around the 9th of September this mm. time, a wee bit earlier. Normally it's the last two weeks in September, but I think we're going around the 9th, yeah. hopefully, two weeks. And we hopefully to get the roof on the house, the windows and doors in all sealed up for winter because the winters mm. are very harsh. So we have to get that done. Okay. Really pressurised two weeks to get done, but hopefully we'll, we'll manage okay. it. Okay, okay. Yeah. want to wish you well. Thank you, Rowan. As you know, we always wish you well. Yeah, it's right, been Rowan, a joy you've been a great supporter of us and we, we, are, well, we are really grateful of it. We've, we've, we've seen the good work you've done mm -hmm. and truly Caritas et Amor mm. in the footsteps of love. Yeah. You are there. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rowan. well. Take care. Thanks, all the best to you.